well uh, to be able to understand the cost in which you are up to whether it's a personal brand whether it's a business brand mm -hmm. or whatever form of a brand that you have whether, whether it's a government agency there's always that story that have led you to where you are to providing that particular value particular service or even a story that made you fail um, and mm -hmm. it's important to tell that story so that people can be able to connect with you. You know, the most important thing about storytelling is you are able to build trust. You are able to come out as authentic. As long as you're telling an honest story, you come out as, an, as, um, as authentic, people are able to connect with you deeply and emotionally mm -hmm. because they can be able to relate with you, especially if the story you're telling is a story that your stakeholders can be able to relate with, whether it's your employees, whether it's your uh, investors, whether mm -hmm. it's your um, shareholders, the general public, the customers, as long as they can be able to relate with that story, they connect with you most deeply. And that is why you find the people whose stories we identify most with are the ones that we tend to trust more. I don't want to talk anything about politics, and I'm sure mm. Kenyans can be able to relate with what I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, so as you said, so it's the trusted brands, uh, you know, through their stories that they've told, authentic stories that people are attracted to them better. Yes. Now, what is the story, your story, as uh, the Calstake uh, group? What story have you been telling? Well, you've told many stories mm -hmm. because we have quite a number of brands. Uh, under Calstick. I can, I can tell a story of how I started my business. I can tell a story of how I started the National Business Leadership Awards. I can tell a story of how I started the annual CEO's breakfast. But the story I can tell that relates most with, um, with the conversation that you're having here today mm -hmm. is how I moved from building a personal development blog, translating it to a startup's magazine, translating it to a senior business leadership magazine, and later all the way helping me to discover myself, helping me to discover about uh, corporate event organizing and people discovering that I can actually tell their stories to starting a strategic communications agency exactly three years ago. Wow. Yes. Amazing. So your story tells, you know, the growth that you have had mm. along the journey. Yes, and, and that is a story that customers have been able to relate with. Mm -hmm. This is a story that has been able to help us build trust. This is a story that has helped us to come out as authentic and to help people totally understand where our brand foundations lay. Mm -hmm. They are able to tell where we are headed and they can be able to see if these are people who have been able to move these steps, they can also help us to structure our story, to mm -hmm. find out story angles in our organization and be able to tell our own, own story mm -hmm. authentically okay. <coughs> across all all brand touch points. Okay. Yes. What, then what makes a successful brand? Is it a brand that ha knows how to tell their story? Is there more to it? Is this a crucial part of uh, a brand being successful? I I'll be lying if I say storytelling is the only thing that makes a brand successful. I mean, I mean mm. building an organization ha has a lot of things. You have to you know, come up with a product. You have to come up with the people. Uh, that are going to build that product, sell that product, mm -hmm. tell the story. Uh, you also have to come up with the processes uh, that, that help you to offer service or produce a product and offer it into the market. These all those integrations. Mm -hmm. If you have the wrong product, definitely, no matter how good your story is, you'll not be able to succeed, to succeed in the market. Okay. If you have a good product and you have the wrong people, definitely your company will fail. If you have the right people, right product, but the wrong story or your story d is not able to connect um, with your customers, is not able to connect with your stakeholders, um, definitely there will be a disconnect and mm -hmm. your brand will not be able to come out as much powerful as it should in the marketplace. And that is why you find there are some products which may not really be the best, uh, I mean in terms of the value they offer to us, but we identify most with them. Mm -hmm. um, I would not want to mention some brand, but I can tell you there are some brands that we prefer because of the stories and the impact they are able to make in people's lives in the society and you know other people who can sell us um, better products or uh, offer much more value at a lower cost but the ones that we identify with most mm -hmm. we continue to buy from them I mean look at where you buy your data uh, look yeah. at where you buy your I mean voice mm -hmm. I mean the brand may not be offering the best packages, but you still continue to identify with them because 
you emotionally connected to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, when you have more to offer, also people want to shop at one place than just hoving around yeah. trying to buy different products. Because you have different it's trainers. a one stop shop. Exactly. All right. So it's uh, basically all these things are interconnected and they're yes. all important to make yes. a brand successful. You have mentioned stakeholders, you know, for others, they might just think uh, with storytelling, it's about what the audience perceives because they're the, your customers, but people also in your organization. Why is it important for them to? also identify with your story? Here's the reason. Um, today I run a company that has at least 10 people that we work with. Mm -hmm. and, and these are people who have believed the vision of the organization, that is the Casti Group, because we exist as an organization to help people lead the change, to help organizations to lead the change by telling authentic stories, by emotionally connecting with their stakeholders, by influencing them, by shaping narratives in their industry, and by helping them not only when they shape those narratives, definitely it is going to translate into a good return on investment, whether it's customer engagement, brand loyalty, that translates into more money in the bank for the brands. Mm -hmm. And the reason the people are important is this. Mm -hmm. um, for every step, for every process in your organization, mm -hmm. as a business, whether you are a small um, mamamboga selling vegetables um, to, your, to the people in your neighborhood, and you have employed one person, probably you sell onions, you sell tsukumawiki, you sell, you know, uh, what else comes with mamambogas? Uh, you know, kitungu yeah, yeah. and all those things. So you have gotten someone to help you kukatakata. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see the way you relate with, uh, with your customers. When you're able to tell this person, um, I saved 1,000 shillings or I borrowed 500 shillings and I've been able to grow that bis this business from this place. I bought a uh, Sukuma Wiki for 500 on the first day and I sold it and then all the way until now I own a Kibanda. Mm -hmm. And this person, you not only help them to see how far you've come, but you're also able to help them to see that you are a person of progress. You're mm -hmm. a person who is moving from one level to the other and they're able to see how you've been able to relate with the different customers that you serve, they're able to see, mm. you know, you nurture them into terms of how to offer a particular service. When somebody calls, you know, nowadays we don't want to go and wait for our mamboga to cut sukuma week or cabbage yes. for us. We give okay. a call and say, this is what you will do for me. I'll come and pick and pay. You are able to train them and be able to tell them, this is how you talk to customers. This is how you mm -hmm. uh, prioritize, um, their, you, you make their customer experience better. And that is a small business that has only one employee. Now consider an organization like probably Safaricom that has over 5,000 employees mm -hmm. or, 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 um, or like Java that has so many different outlets or a supermarket that has uh, so many outlets. Mm -hmm. You're able to trade them, number one, to help them understand what these brands stand for. Now, okay. when they understand what the brand stands for, what did the founder had in mind? When I started this uh, coffee chain brand, what did I have in mind? Where did I want this brand to go? How have we transformed from just one outlet to probably 50 or 60 outlets? I see nowadays Java is almost everywhere, Art Cafe is almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where ha how has that vision transitioned over time? And then you are able, when they are able to capture that, you're also able to, f to show them how exactly they fit into this vision and their role. Because people want to be and work in an organization when they're making contributions, they want to work in an organization where they feel respected, where they feel valued. Um, valued. But most importantly, these are people with ambitions, these are people with dreams, these are people with visions. Mm. You need to show them how their vision integrates with that of your organization. You are able to show them exactly how their personal values and the values of the organizations intertwine. Mm -hmm. There is no disconnect because there is no way you can work in an organization whose values uh, do not align with yours. Whether you, you just want to work for money or not, you want to work in an organization where you feel more human, where you feel you are contributing more. So when you people understand that, they are able to to be more proactive mm -hmm. in, in whatever departments they are in, whether it's, it's customer service, product development, marketing, mm -hmm. finance, and all that, because they're able to feel, this is where I belong. This is our vision. This mm -hmm. is my contribution. These are the results that you're helping to drive.
Okay. Yes. Wow. I think I love that. So they need to also understand the story in order to um, help you achieve the vision <coughs> that you have for the company. Yes. Now, how do you tell your brand story? Well, number one, it all starts with the brand strategy. I mean, mm -hmm. um, when you sit down and plan to start a business, you know, we are no longer in the 80s and 70s. I mean, those days, you and I were not born. Yeah. Where people used to sit down and come up mm -hmm. with a very good, proper business plan on how they will make profit. They don't oversee, they don't look, um, they don't plan to make losses and all those things. Mm -hmm. Of course, nowadays, you have to make a plan. It could be one page or two pages. But you have to ask yourself, uh, what kind of a business do I want to start? I normally say starting a business is totally different from starting a successful business. So if okay. you want to start a business today, you have to ask yourself, what kind of a business do I want to start? Do I want to start a business that only serves um, this road, which is, is it Kipande Street, or what is the name of this road? Um, yeah, Kipande. Yeah, yeah, Kipande Street, or, or whatever. Or oh, Haridukuro. Road. Let's yeah, use Haridukuro. Road. Mm -hmm. Do I want to start a business that only serves Haridukuro Road, or Mundimbigu Street alone, or Biashara Street alone? Or do I want to start a business that serves the central business district? Or do I want to start a business that serves the whole country? Or do I want to start a business that will extend uh, regionally, East Africa, or probably the whole African region, or the entire world? Mm -hmm you decide that at the beginning okay. and when you decide the kind of business you want to start that mm -hmm. helps you to know the kind of foundation you're going to you're going to start that is why i give people examples mm -hmm. if for example somebody wants to start a hardware shop yeah um that is focused on serving probably the kamakis area i mean there's a lot of construction going mm -hmm. going on there kamakis is in drill bypass mm -hmm. you want to start a, a hardware that serves around around that locality and another one wants to start a hardware that wants to go um, the whole country, like, like Mudokinju. Mm. The brand identity that you build, the brand identity that you conceptualize, is totally different when you're starting a business that will serve the local community compared to the one that will serve a nation. whole big um, nation or the whole region. That is where you find somebody will come and tell you, I need a logo. Because they only need a logo to put on their signage. Probably 1,000 people will see it in, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. just people in the, in, the, in the neighborhood. I mean, it is okay for that person to come and tell you, I mean, their budget is 500 or 1,000. But another person wants to start a brand that will, will serve millions. I mean, you can't come to a company like Halstic and you build brand identities and you tell us you want to mm -hmm. us to build, to create a logo for you. I'll come and tell you, you don't need a logo. You need a whole visual brand identity. You need a logo. You need the... the um, the, 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 the typography guideline, you need um, uh, the color scheme so that you can be able to know these are our colors. Mm -hmm. And every branch that we have, we use this colors. specific blue. We use this specific green. We use this specific maroon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come up with a typography guideline that says this is our font for headlines. Mm -hmm. This is our font for, for body text. You need a wonderful website that people can be able to see. It's a, it's a website that people that is interactive, that is responsive, a website that customers can be able to come and be able to get what they're looking for mm -hmm. um, uh, immediately without wasting time. You need to come up with, we'll, we'll guide you and tell you, you need to come up with um, an office internal communications and the way your office is, is, um, <coughs> is designed internally in a way that is, is identical is identical in every uh, in every uh, branch or in every branch or outlet that you have. If if probably you are a retail shop, okay. you need to come up with a template for your social media. You need to come up with templates for for your business card, letterhead, and all those things that is consistent across. Mm -hmm. You see, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. All of you are starting a business. All of you need a brand identity design, yeah. but the scope is totally different because your target is different. The same way. The reason it's different, part of it is because your brand touch points are totally different. Mm -hmm. The person who is starting um, a local hardware shop, the only brand touch points is at the shop, majorly. I mean, you want to come up with a distribution um, after sale services. If you order two bags of cement, we have our own border border guy who will deliver to you. If I'm starting a big hardware, I mean, I need to have trucks. 
that yeah. we will be able to deliver. If you buy cement, uh, 500 bags of cement will be able to transport them for you from here to Kisumu or to Malaba or these other sides of Mombasa or the northern parts of Isiolo and, mm -hmm. and Mandera or the central part of Kenya. You see, it's totally different. The yeah. customers, the people that will touch your brand, these, those people who come to interact with you at mm -hmm. your outlets, these people who will be in touch with your brand, when your trucks are delivering goods and services, your goods, sorry, they are branded. If probably at a zebra crossing, your driver does not want pedestrians to cross, they will be able to see this is a not a good <laughs> this is not a good company. Because I mean, <laughs> they don't obey traffic rules. You okay, see, it yeah. is part of your brand reputation that is being ruined. So you see, your customer touch points mm -hmm. and your stakeholders now broadens based on the kind of an organization that you want to build. And that is where now we come to the aspect of mm -hmm. brand design, brand storytelling. Okay. Which story are you telling? To who? Mm -hmm. What kind of a brand experience do you want people to have with you? The person who is starting a hardware shop at, at a local um, area, uh, area the, the, the brand touch points are very few. I mean, if you print flyers, you... I mean, you only Distribute need people it and you, uh, just it. within your area at your junction and yeah. probably the neighboring shops and all that. Mm -hmm. and, and the people who are relating with your brand, your motorbike will not even be branded. Mm -hmm. So it's only people in the community. But now, when now you are a big brand like Naivas, people will reach you, even those who are not your customers, they will reach out on your social media pages because you need to market on mm -hmm. social media. They will reach your website and they will see how it is. They will be able to interact with your with, with your with your company cars, they will be able to come to your to your to your shop and all those things. They may not be your customers, mm -hmm. but they are part of the extended group of stakeholders. Okay. You owe them trust. Mm -hmm. You owe them credibility. You owe them a story mm -hmm. because you've seen and Kenyans are very active online. You do something, somebody that that has never bought uh, from you. They have an opinion about you. True. You see, yeah. and, and, and you owe them that because with greater, with, um, with big success comes greater responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, you owe the public mm -hmm. uh, something. You owe them a story. Yeah. You owe them an experience. So that is how it broadens. You need to ask yourself, what are my customers? What are my brand touch points? Mm -hmm. If you're a big brand, you have number one, the internal customers. Everything starts at home. The internal customers are your team, right. your employees. You have to make sure that they are telling the same story. Not that Stephanie works with me, but when she talks about my company and I talk about my company, they, uh, seem like we, two different they are things. totally like two <laughs> different companies. When you get, when somebody gets your business card and somebody gets my business card, yes, the company is the name is the same, but they look totally different. Mm. We need to train our people to tell the same story, to give the same experience. Mm -hmm. If you walk to KFC um, at um, Kenyatta Avenue today, and in the evening, probably you have a business in Kisumu. You fly to Kisumu or Mombasa and you yeah. walk to another KFC. Mm -hmm. The experience is the same. That's true. The food, the chicken you will eat, the fries. Same quality. Same quality, same everything. Mm -hmm. So how can you business as a small person be the same. Mm -hmm. It may not be, you may not have different uh, branches, but the way you treat customer A should be the same way you treat customer, customer B. B. The same set of words that you use, we are now talking about the messaging strategy mm -hmm. and your messaging pillars, should yeah. be the same. You can't be rude to one customer <laughs> and another customer you are not, you're, you're, you're very kind, you're very nice, such that when they are talking about you, they feel like, <laughs> you get, yeah. you know, it has to be, to be the same. So you start with your team, you train them to have the same brand experience because they, even internally they need to have to experience the same. You can't afford to be a business leader whose junior staff members or your employees have a different experience. You know, you are good to maybe the, the sales team or, the, mar or the, um, the marketing team. Okay, some people combine sales and market, but those are totally different, different departments. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and the accounts team or 
employee A has a different experience with the, with the boss because they enjoy a close relationship from the other. No, you have to treat your employees equally. You have to make sure they are all well taken care of. Because mm. when they're well taken care of, they will take care of the customers very well. So you move from it your employees internally, uh -huh. internally, then your customers. Mm -hmm. You need to ask yourself, what are the different areas that my customers interact with us? Mm -hmm. At what point do we owe them a story? We are coming up with a new product. Mm -hmm. We need probably to launch. I mean, it's something they need to know. You need to tell them that story. It could be through the media. It could be through um, brand activations. It could be through, you know, your website, your social media. It yeah. could be, you know, um, you know, there's the the brand activations are closed. Maybe malls or retail outlets. That is, is that is if you are an FMCG, and all those kind of things. Making sure that whatever information your customer needs gets it. Number one, the right message. Mm -hmm. to the right people at the right time using the right media. I've seen so many organizations make this mistake. One customer has a problem with your brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, pick your phone and call that person or visit that person. Mm -hmm. What is the whole point of issuing a press release? <laughs> and it's just one person. I mean, it's just one person. Go and talk with that person. And if you are to go out to the media and talk, first meet with this customer. Establish an understanding. Make them understand uh, mm -hmm. that the bad experience they had is not what your brand um, mm -hmm. stands for. Make them uh, come up with a conclusion on how you're going to resolve. And if you're going to issue a statement, issue it together with a with oh, great customer. customer. Okay. I mean, that is part of crisis communication and crisis management. Mm -hmm. But now we have seen some brands going online. People didn't even know you have issues. So now they have an discover. issue with you. <laughs> yes. Oh, so you, that's, you know. Yeah, you I mean, that's you. you we will never come there. They will <laughs> even curse you. You yeah, get. Yeah. Some things require that. Other things require you to just send an email. Probably you are a land selling company and you promise to issue title deeds on, mm. today is on 25th, right? Yeah. Of, of November. Mm -hmm. and, and last week you had not received the title deeds from from the land registry or wherever it is mm. these uh, title deeds come from. And it is evident you will not be able to produce the titles today. today. Email those customers. Call them. Mm -hmm. Let them understand. Establish an understanding. You don't want to wait until Monday <laughs> when customers are asking for their title deeds or they are already in your office. You tell them, by the way, are two na titles. Yeah. I mean, and I'm speaking it's this from weeks. experience. Okay. As an agency, I've worked with a land selling company that customers kept complaining all the time because of the same things. You shared you, there's something called public accountability. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I'll give you an example. Last week we were supposed to have an event we call the Women's CEOs Forum. We advertised it on the internet quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And in as much as some people paid, others registered, others didn't register, but the event was not feasible. Mm -hmm. um, because we couldn't deliver the value that we had promised. Yeah. We didn't meet the set numbers. And we had to cancel the event, issue refunds, and call the people who had, who had, um, paid. Who had paid. But most importantly, these people who had seen us advertising. Mm. You see, if you advertise something on the internet and saying, on the 21st of November, we'll have the Women's CEOs Forum. Mm -hmm. Whether or not these people are intending to come, you owe them you see, you started something, you have to mm. finish. So okay. you have to either tell them the event happened, these are the photos, these mm -hmm. are the videos, or the event didn't happen because of ABCD. Mm -hmm. But people most of the time miss that mark. Okay. You promised people that you'll have a title deed issuing day on this particular day. Mm -hmm. Probably it's for 50 customers. But you, your page has 50,000 people. You promise, you told them you will issue title deed to your customers. Yes. And then you, you only communicate to your customers that title deeds, uh, you will mm. not have a title deed issuing day, but you didn't tell the public that the title deed issuing day that you had planned is not coming. So you only pull out the post and just sit there and think the people will forget. People will not forget <laughs> because <laughs> people are always watching. Are you consistent okay. in the things that you're promising? We may, not be boy, we may not be your customers or even your target market. But just because I'm not your target market and I'm consuming your, your, your content or the stories and the messages you're sending to us does not mean mm -hmm. I do not know someone that would require your service or product at one given time. Okay. So if 
I'm not intending to buy land. Mm -hmm. And you promised your customers you will give them title deeds. And I didn't see you posting photos of title deeds. You never said anything. You just continued launching another project. project. And a friend of mine, probably, you know, these land selling companies target people in diaspora. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine from Dubai or UK or Minnesota or another place, or even next door, Tanzania wants to buy land in Kenya, and they asked me, I want to buy land with this company. What do you have to say about them? I mean, I'll be honest, these people promised I told it, and they never told us whether they gave out, they came they, out, they, or, they not. Came out or not. You mm -hmm. see, so that public accountability is very important. So we have moved from internal customers, we have gone to mm -hmm. your real customers, we have gone to the general public. Yeah. Now, there are also other stakeholders, the government. I mean, we right. have to pay taxes. And of course, sometimes uh, you will miss uh, paying your, your, your taxes on time. I mean, just call your, your tax manager at KRE and tell them I'm having some these problem. challenges, some challenges, and I may not be able to pay this time, probably give me a week or two. You don't have to wait until KRA sends you demand <laughs> letters. Yeah. I mean, I've suffered that in the past. KRA wrote, wrote me letters. Okay. Of course, that was sorted. But you don't have to wait until they do that. I mean, we are in business. We are human beings. We understand sometimes things don't happen as you expect them. Mm. So you owe them that communication. Immediately, you realize you will not be able to meet your obligations. The person who was expecting on that other end mm -hmm. deserves that information. You need to tell them before, you know, they start getting disappointment, they disappointed, they start seeing you as a wrong person and all that thing. Okay. Those are now the government, you know, government relations. Mm -hmm. And of course, they are, depending on the sector th that you are operating from, there is different agencies and regulatory bodies that, that, um, that are involved or that you relate with. Mm -hmm. But also, you have suppliers. Okay. It's something we call supplier relations. Mm -hmm. You also need to find to know at what point do I interact with my suppliers? What pieces of information do suppliers expect from me? I mean, I've worked with some companies and they missed payments and they didn't tell us. They didn't tell us they were missing payments. Mm. Because you see, if you are if you are my supplier or i'm your supplier let mm. me use that lenient example okay. i'm your supplier mm -hmm. for whatever service and you I mean we live in a circular economy yeah i provided some services to you i delivered some goods to you you paid some form of down payment because for us at calstick you have to pay down payment mm -hmm. we need to see you are serious you we can sign contract you can write us lpos but you need I mean, to we show need money. <laughs> I mean, we need money. <laughs> that is a fact. So you yeah. need to pay some down payment, and probably um, you promise to pay the balance after the service is completed, mm -hmm. or after 14 days of delivery, or 30 days, and all that. And you just see it. Mm -hmm. The day comes, you miss the payment. You don't talk. The following day, you don't talk. I call you and ask you. I expected What's some up? payment. What happened? Mm -hmm. uh, and you tell me, oh, you know, whatever. You know, to me, that will be stories. I mean, let's be honest. If somebody was supposed to pay you and they didn't pay you on time and you have to follow up, anything they say will be stories, it will be hogwash and whatever sort of names they will exactly. call it. But if you're a responsible person enough to go and tell your suppliers that I'm expecting some payment on 25th mm -hmm. or 30th of November, and they will pay probably bank transfer or check or whatever. So give me three days, I'll pay you on 28th. So you have promised me, you have promised your supplier that they're supposed to be paid on this particular day. And by 24th, it mm. is evident. True. The person who was paying you so that you can pay us has not paid, which means you will miss a payment, right? Mm -hmm. Communicate with your suppliers and tell them, by the way, he payment now na ikidile. So, so that you can help them plan. Mm. The same thing if you, at the end of the month, you see your income has not been um, very promising and you will miss paying salaries. Tell your employees in time. But this month There'll has be not delay. been good. There will be a delay for a day or two or a week. No, just keeping quiet there every day. Uh, people guessing, 10 days, wondering. 20 days is almost two months. You're not talking and you expect your employees to mm. just be there, happy, clapping for you. I mean, they have obligations. They have responsibilities they have to take care, yeah, to care of. So, the same thing with suppliers. So, you have to ask yourself, which 
-hmm. brand touch points that's mm -hmm. my brand have mm -hmm. what story do i offer to them mm -hmm. that is all about relations mm -hmm. there is also the other aspect of now building trust credibility things like for example you know we all talk about um customer testimonials product service yeah. uh, journey and all those we have seen um an advert of roiko showing us how they make Rico cubes you know from the farm they bring yes. whatever whatever and then they make it just shows you they want to tell us that the product is organic mm -hmm. and it helps you because probably uh, you love a particular ingredient and you've seen them telling a story of how they make it they help you fall in love with the with the brand you've seen Del Monte come and tell us our mango juice is a hundred percent mango mm -hmm. our pineapple juice is a hundred percent pineapple. pineapple and they show you the the process, the, the process. Mm. you are able to fall in love with the brand because if you show me how you make your juice your yogurt and person b comes and sells us the yogurt and they don't tell us how they make the yogurt i mean i'll be inclined to buy from the person exactly the me. person you most relate with mm -hmm. if you probably we are now moving to solar at an increasing rate and different companies that sell solar you've been seeing them you've been looking for a company to work with you search on the internet on social media tiktok is big nowadays mm -hmm. linkedin and whatever and you're looking for a company to work with one of them just says this is our customer we installed solar that is customer a and this is uh, whatever the, um, mm -hmm. the, the the amount of power they're generating this is amount they are saving from from the electricity bills this is how their processes have been able to improve another person says we sell solar this is mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your project to you send you a quotation uh, that is person B and then uh, company C comes and tells you you see there is a whole story for a whole month they say they, we have a client in um, in Kajiado they have been struggling with power bills they have a farm they need irrigation and all those things and they are looking for a solution that will help them power their 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 borehole and this is us we have delivered the materials this is the one we went for a site visit we evaluated the project then they have another video or photos of showing them delivering the materials they have day five of doing the work up until mm. the project completion and the customer and the customer um, testimonial which one are you likely to buy from person a who told you this is our project in current this, this is our project in machakos mm -hmm. this is the power they are saving and all that this is another person who just told you they make they do solar and this is another person who showed you the journey of how they offer their service i'd go with the last one exactly yeah. that is how important storytelling, storytelling is, is. Yes. okay now people are able to relate with you and they're able to trust the products that you're offering and the services that you're offering and that's now how you build brand loyalty i believe exactly or, now, you, you come out as authentic mm -hmm. i mean if i tell you i install solar and i actually show you how i install, I install it. it yes and you actually see me installing Compared to another person who tells you they install solar, they don't even show you whatever they do. Mm -hmm. And another person tells you they install solar and they show you their clients. I mean, my story comes out as authentic because you can actually see, see me. Seeing is believing. You've seen and me doing that for this client. You've mm -hmm. seen me doing this for this client. And you've seen me doing for the other client. That to me is way better marketing than keeping telling us buy from us, buy from us, buy from us. Okay, all right. Yes. And is that where brands usually get it wrong? Or where do you, where have you seen brands getting it wrong, especially when they're trying to market, to market their product and it's not working for them? So is it in this storytelling? No, it's not storytelling, uh, because I mean, very few brands engage in storytelling. This mm. is what happens, and the problem is, most SMEs, mm -hmm. most organizations, and anybody will tell you there is always a fight between the finance guys. And the marketing guys why because the finance guys sees marketing as a cost mm. and marketing is broad mm -hmm. there is business development there is direct selling the actual sales and advertising and all that there's public relations where where storytelling comes in where um, brand messaging comes in where media relations come in okay. where stakeholder engagement comes in you see all that I kid you not, go to any organization that you are thinking of today and ask them, which do you have 
a communications department. Mm -hmm. Just ask them, do you have a communications department? Mm -hmm. Hawana. Do you have a communication strategy? Hawana. They only have sales and marketing. That's it. And the sales and marketing they're talking about is a bunch of sales guys only. Uh -huh. Just sales. you given flyers. Go out to that yeah. town. And, and a lot of pressure. Them. No training. <laughs> pressure, pressure. You, you're not meeting your targets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a very sad Sorry, so, sorry, state of affairs. Mm. Because marketing is supposed to be holistic. Okay. You can't invest in just sales alone, running billboards and everything, and expect to compete with an organization that is doing that plus stakeholder engagement, that is doing media relations, mm -hmm. media liaison. You can't compete with an organization that is doing, um, that is very active digitally. I mean, we live in a digital world. They are showing customer journeys, they are sharing their testimonials. You can't compare also a companies whose CEO mm -hmm. is very vocal about telling their story with a company that nobody is known. The C you don't even know who the CEO is. Ah, they only post flyers. <laughs> flyers on Monday, flyers on Tuesday, Tuesday, and then on Sunday they post a Bible verse. <laughs> you can't compare that with a brand that shows their real people. Mm -hmm. You know who their CEO is, they show how uh, passionate they are about strategic communications like I'm here talking about strategic communication yeah the other one is um, is just hiding and telling us oh we can do social media for you we can do uh, logo design for you I mean people buy from people mm -hmm. if you go out there organizations that are able to build personal brands within the organization mm -hmm. can out compete organizations that do not have personal brands if you look at organizations where only the CEO, well, of course, the CEO is the face of the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, given. Yeah, that's given mm -hmm. in any industry, in anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But you have seen organizations where the CEO is the face of the company, we have the company spokesperson. Yeah. You get, we have the sales and marketing manager does TV interviews, goes live. We have the customer experience and the customer success team. They also go live, they do videos. We have people in the, um, which other department? Business development, mm -hmm. uh, product development team. One company, but has different people going out to tell the brand story compared to another company where only the CEO shares the story and another company where nobody shares the brand story. Mm -hmm. You can't compare the success of those you companies. Can co they can I can compete. name the brands, but... <laughs> they have not paid me to market <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they have not paid anything. Yes. But you agree right. with me, right? Yeah, that, that's yes. very true. Yes. What, what about um, companies that have sort of, um, I, I, I don't know, that they sort of went below the standard, I'm trying to use a very politically correct statement, mm -hmm. and how do they get back the, or gain back the trust and authenticity mm -hmm. they had with their audience? Because we have had brands that were trusted and then people moved away from it for a reason or the other. So how do they gain back the trust? How do they start telling their stories again? They hire Carl Stick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the first direct answer because we have, they have to hire us, of course, as a communications agency because first we need mm -hmm. to analyze. We need to ask critical questions. Where were you before? Why did you come from that position? Mm. How did you lose trust with your team first, mm -hmm. with your customers, with your, um, with the general public? Because you have to ask yourself, you are not paying your employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, so nobody wants to work with you. Yeah. You still, a friend of mine came and um, she was, very confused and she told me, you know, my former boss, we have been friends for, for a longer time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my former boss in 2021, you know, he's telling actually everybody resigned from that company and now he's starting another company and he wants to fire me. And I'm like, why did you resign? <laughs> and, you know, I, we never got paid. Like, we, were you paid? And then she's like, no. And then she's like, I'm, I'm like, what are you confused about? Yeah. You worked with this guy in his previous company. He never paid you. He wants to hire you in another company. I mean, are you out of your mind? Yeah. What trust do you have with this person? Let that person first pay you. 
Exactly. What they owe you. Let that person first pay all others and confirm with them that this person has paid Pesa za Kitambo so that they can start hiring people. I mean, mm. that is how trust is built. Mm -hmm. You run a, a, a land selling company, you never issued title, title deeds on time. You run a, product, a, um, a property development company, you never completed projects on time. Mm -hmm. You fell out with your customers, issue those title deeds first. I mean, that's how we will tell you. Mm -hmm. Pay your employees that you never paid, issue title deed. I mean, deliver the customer promise. Mm -hmm. And then now come and tell the story. Okay. This is what we have done. We fell out because of this. This is how we have corrected it. Mm -hmm. The people who spoke ill of you, come back with them now, stronger as an alliance, that we went um, short of our promise, we have delivered it, and this is now the direction that we are, that we are moving. And now we will be able now to help you mm. to amplify that story. We help you to tell that story digitally through multimedia storytelling. Mm -hmm. We help you get into the media to tell that story. We will help in correcting the negative stories that were published okay. um, by media houses mm. um, about you. You know, we will not delete the story, but we can add a disclaimer. Uh, if probably your, your company fell under because you are not issuing title deeds or you are not completing the story. I mean, we, we, we relate with journalists and we are able to add at the beginning of the story, we, uh, we talk with the, with the editor and write up or to Nandika. Mm -hmm. this, uh, the, 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 the media house has now learned that the customers have been compensated, the title deeds have been issued. You see, mm -hmm. you come out in a, in a positive outlook, and okay. now we try now, we now from there build positive stories. But you can't come and say, oh, we fell, but now we want to rise <laughs> without rectifying the previous injustices. You can't just injustices. have a fresh start without correcting yes, and the it wrongs. is not that easy like I'm putting it. It, mm. it takes time, it takes a lot of honesty because you come and hire us as an agency, we ask you questions, you don't answer us. How are we going to help you? Mm. And we will tell you, where well, is this idea? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> look for someone else. Because, okay. because even for us as an agency, we have values, mm -hmm. transparency, honesty, integrity. Those are our values, plus many others that are mm. So we only work with brands that align with our values okay. because we can't tell help you to tell a lie mm -hmm. i mean our future is compromised yeah yes. so because you're also looking out for yourself exactly. in the long run yes. what about now in um telling the stories of a brand do you need to with their how uh, you know the media has evolved the social media space do you tell the same story across all the brands or do you tweak your story depending on where you're disseminating it in it's something called um, brand consistency but there is also something called storytelling strategy mm -hmm. you ask yourself what goals do I have for my company brand engagement no the first one is brand visibility the second one is brand engagement the other one is um, mm -hmm. brand engagement and stakeholder engagement is the same the other one is of course um, generating more business sales mm -hmm. so that is on the strategy then this strategy is aligning with your with your stakeholders your customers i'm sure you're asking this in relation to customers mm -hmm. you need to segment your customers yeah so i need to speak to my customers where do i speak with them okay where do i speak to them um part of my customers are on tiktok mm -hmm. part of my customers uh, the older generation, they, 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 they watch news. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, they read newspapers. Others are um, millennials like myself. We are on Facebook um, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, others, they are in malls. Mm -hmm. You get. So you ask yourself, which goal do I accomplish where? TikTok is really good for brand visibility, brand engagement with the younger and not so young people. The Gen Z and the millennials, millennials. not all of them, but yeah. it's really good. But these people trust influencers a lot. Actually wanted to bring the influencer in. Yes, uh -huh. they trust influencers a lot. So I'll do brand visibility, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels mm -hmm. with influencers 
with uh, our team engaging with uh, with such things i mean we saw the late um bob colimo doing a lot of things mm. with people we have seen what sylvia molinga is doing um, in uganda she's part of the brand she's doing the videos and we have seen quite a number of other ceos who are trying to catch up yeah you know um doing brand visibility and engagement on those fronts um these people who will not, I mean, social media makes them tired. They want to sit down and watch um, television. Mm. So they want to come like, uh, like the way I'm here and talk to their stakeholders on TV, tell their story, appear on podcasts. They want to do native content on Facebook. They'll go and do brand activations. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a caravan, you partner with the Y254 or KBC, mm -hmm. and you are on the road show in Kakamega, you know, greeting radio fans and the brand yeah. um, customers, you know, meeting them where they are. Others are in malls. You want to do uh, brand engagement in mall. Others, uh, pro if, if, you're, if you're doing uh, FMCGs, um, you know, FMCGs, for That's those who don't know, uh -huh. is actually fast-moving consumer goods. Okay. You're producing salt, uh, you know, the basic commodities that we use. Mm -hmm. Salt, flour, sugar. sugar. Mention the things that we use in the household. Uh, sanitary products, yeah. those kind of things. You want to meet them at the supermarkets. You give them an, ex an experience. You know, you have to ask yourself where your every segment of your mm -hmm. of your stakeholders or customers. Ash. The reason I'm mentioning stakeholders is because I'm a communication specialist. We tell stories. We don't do mm. sales. <laughs> okay. yes, I'm more into telling your story. I'm more into engaging your customers. Uh -huh. I'm not more into getting you business because mm -hmm. people confuse uh, communications agencies with advertising and marketing and sales agencies, which, which are we different. are not. They are totally different. Mm -hmm. We actually, one day, a, a, a company hired us to do their um, mm -hmm. multimedia storytelling, media relations, and, and social media marketing, and, and lead generation, which mm -hmm. we did very well. But they didn't call the leads they generated. We generated. I mean, we generate 400 leads for you, and you don't call them. Oh. They're like, they're like oh, we thought you will call them. No, that is not part <laughs> of our job. We generate leads, you call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have your call center and your sales guys. That is not part of our job. And, uh, and I think one day we need to sit here, by the and way, talk about and talk the about the different types of agencies. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask people today, SMEs, they will, one thing they will together tell you is social media agencies don't deliver. They will tell you, <laughs> I kid you not, they'll tell you social media agencies don't deliver. Yeah. But it's because of misaligned um, objectives. Mm -hmm. You hire a, legion, uh, a, a social media agency that is supposed to help you tell your story digitally, uh, native content, and do lead generation, and you confuse this with a sales agency. A sales agency is the one that generates sales for you. Mm -hmm. A social media, media agency is supposed to, to do brand awareness and brand engagement. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are talking about stories. So we'll you have to segment to your, uh -huh. your, 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 your customers, your stakeholders, look at the different mediums. We call them mediums. Um, website, uh, social media, that is TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook, podcast, newspapers, mm. magazines, um, uh, activations, different types of activations, whether it's uh, in retail outlets, that is supermarkets, or that is supermarkets or phone shops. If mm. you, if let's say you are Oppo or Huawei or whichever other brand of phones uh, that you're selling or you're selling gadgets. Uh, you want to have your people doing engagement in where your customers go to buy. You want to do caravans. So you have to segment. It's a whole thing you have to do, a strategy. And if you are interested, I mean, we can sit down with you, plan that whole thing mm -hmm. for you. From mm -hmm. how you start telling your story, uh -huh. the key message, the anchor message, uh, and supporting messages, and how now you convert and track and measure your return on investment. All right. Yes, because I mean, you have to measure your your brand reach, you have to measure yeah. your brand engagement, mm. you have to measure how is it translating to sales. Is that how you know that um, you have been effective in storytelling? Yes, because mm -hmm. you can be somewhere telling your story to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because part of storytelling um, and, and brand engagement is through stakeholder engagement and experiential marketing. Mm -hmm. 
So a company can reach out to us and tell us we want to identify any events that we can we can go and sponsor. I mean, every single day as we are here today, there is probably 100 events, events happening, happening within Nairobi. True. How do you know which one you are going to sponsor? Mm -hmm. You have seen so many people taking their marketing budget and sponsoring the wrong events okay. for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You get because they lack these things you are talking about. So you need to ask yourself. Where exactly are my stakeholders? What do I go and do there? Mm. Do I go there and do brand marketing? Do I go there and do sales? Mm. You see, do I go there and provide customer experience? Okay. You know, we have a new brand of juice. Let people taste. Mm -hmm. You're not there to sell. All right. Yes. You know, th there's a reason it's called uh, stakeholder engagement. There's a reason it's called experiential marketing because you want to provide an experience. You want to build an experience. Yeah. And then after that, now you can build the sales process and all that. But mm. some people sponsor the wrong events and expect to, to get a return on investment overnight. Just can't it can't happen. It doesn't work uh, that it way. It can't happen. You, you <laughs> have to tell people the truth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's fair enough. And as a way of closing, yes. um, what what is it that you yourself, you know, have learned over the years that people can also learn from? from and what are the magic trends in event storytelling um, that, people need to be aware of be honest be transparent be authentic mm -hmm. be yourself okay. i mean you can't go lying to people mm -hmm. and expect to get away with it Does you might you can succeed um uh for the short period but my friend mm -hmm. <laughs> you will fail in a way that you never expected so it's, yeah. it's good to be honest um with all your stakeholders it's good to be factual Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, uh, that, that's something that I've learned over the last eight years I've been in, in communication. Uh. But there's a lot of emerging trends, um, especially multimedia storytelling. Yeah. Um, the way customers interact with brands is totally different. So the question you need to ask yourself is you go back to your drawing board with your team. If you don't have a team, you get an agency that can help you. And be able to ask yourself what different ways are our customers consuming our story are our customers consuming our product how can we find how can we reach them there mm -hmm. you know um, a while back people used to use google to search quite a lot mm -hmm. you know we use keywords and all those things which is really good nowadays people are searching on tiktok sure. but we are we used to do search engine optimization mm -hmm. which we still do but now there is artificial intelligence mm -hmm. So you need to do AI search engine optimization. <laughs> okay. Yes. You see, things are changing very things fast. Changing very so fast. you need to ask yourself, what are the emerging trends within our industry? Because, I mean, we have so many industries and sectors. We can't talk about them here today. That's you have true. to ask yourself, where do we fall? Where, um, what have changed in terms of uh, customer relations, uh, employee relations also? If you have a hybrid or work-from-home model, um, how, what are the emerging trends in relating with stakeholders and all mm. those kind of things and then you formulate a strategy that uh, that you can be able to you know grow your business okay great yes. amazing amazing thank you so much for the insights You're maybe welcome. you can share your platform where people can get you if they need your services no it's easy just go and search top PR agency in Kenya or strategic communications agency in Kenya okay. you will find Calstick there and you say I'm offering 15% discount for any service you 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 choose wow yeah. yeah wow amazing amazing that's an offer that you really need to jump on if i were you thank you very much patrick once again you're welcome uh, always a pleasure so we have been talking about how to tell your brand story and we've had kimani patrick the ceo of the caustic group limited i hope you've taken something from it maybe hopefully we'll continue with this conversation later or another topic for now we take a short break and then we'll be right back stick with us Y254 Imagine Commando 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 Commando
inakuwaje ni kila Jumatatu kutokea saa 1:05 hadi 3